So FFmpeg is very simple and very powerful, and it's actually a lot more straightforward than you might realize. I use it exclusively for my screen recording and mic recording, and then I also use it for the post-processing of taking this phone video here and slapping it into the corner of the screen and drawing a little gray box around that. That's done entirely with FFmpeg bash scripts, and I've got my recording script here, and then I have an additional script that's just gonna take everything and slap it all together and give me that final video that's gonna get uploaded. So I'm gonna go over today how these scripts work, how I use FFmpeg, and also the basics of recording and some of the filter options with it as well. Um, I want to start by going over why I'm not using OBS, because OBS is kind of the standard for recording, and I've gotten, you know, questions asking if I'm using OBS. I'm not using OBS. It's a huge program, and I'm not saying it's bad, but it is just too much for what I need. All I need to do is record my screen and record my mic, and that's it. And OBS is this big tool meant for recording and live streaming and all of this other stuff, and I just don't need something that resource intensive. And not to mention, if I try to run it on my ThinkPad, it just lags out. It is that resource intensive, whereas FFmpeg can instead just run exactly what I need, which is just the singular recording command that I need it to be running. So um, if you don't already know, FFmpeg is essentially just just a bunch of tools for audio and video manipulation. Um, everything from recording and streaming to converting between formats to applying filters onto audio and video. So for example, I have a denoise filter on my mic that is getting applied live as I'm recording and writing to that file. So that's pretty cool. And there's a whole bunch of stuff you can do with FFmpeg. And it, it really shines when you want to be running a bunch of things many times over and you don't want to be, you know, having to open up like editing software or, you know, KDN Live or whatever to actually apply those edits. Since I'm running the same things every single video I make, you know, I always have to take this phone and put it in the corner of the screen and draw a little box around it. So why would I do that manually in an editing program when I can just have a shell script to do it, right? Anyways, so to record with FFmpeg, I know the commands with FFmpeg can kind of appear intimidating at first if you've never done anything with them, but you can break them down always into input and output. It's always going to be an input file and an output file. So if I want to record my screen here, the screen is going to be the input and the video file that I'm writing to is going to be the output. So I would start by adding this dash F for format X11 grab since I'm on X and I will put the Wayland equivalent in the description. Um, so dash F X11 grab and then I want my input to actually just be this second monitor here. So I'm going to start with 00, zero since that's the top coordinate of the first monitor and then I'm going to add on 1920 since my first monitor is 1920 by 1080. I'm just going to add on 1920 and then uh, comma zero and then I'm just going to give it an output file which is uh, I don't know test.mkv. Um, and the only other thing I want to do is just give a video resolution um, just as a good practice it's um, better to just give it a resolution so that way you can just ensure you're getting the right resolution if I go ahead and press enter we are now recording my screen and uh, it is actually that simple the only other thing worth mentioning if you don't know your screen dimensions just check with x randar and um, it actually goes ahead and tells me uh, plus 1920 that is um, where I'm going to shift over that's where the display port display actually starts Anyways, so I could just queue to quit out of this recording and then I could check on it with, you know, MPV or whatever you normally use. And um, yeah, we've got a screen recording. Perfect. So if I wanted to have audio on that recording as well, um, I could go ahead and instead run this with an extra input as um, a ALSA device. So I could do F, uh, oops, F ALSA and dash I default, and that's just going to run with the default input device, which is my mic. If you have multiple inputs, then just check and make sure you're selecting the right one, but I only have one, so I can just go with default there, and that is now recording my screen with my mic, and that is the most simple way to record with FFmpeg. Um, that is as simple as just recording with one command, but of course it would be a lot simpler to have it just run with a hotkey, which is what I normally do, hence why this recording script here. So this recording script allows me to just call it with the hotkey and then run it to record. It toggles on and off recording, and then it also adds this little thing in DWM block so I can actually see if I'm recording or not. Um, and I just have this bound as a hotkey, so I, I literally am just calling this shell script with the hotkey. So um, the main thing going on here is this record function. The first thing I want to do is toggle on my microphone since I normally leave it off. So I first toggle it on. 
Um, and then I have my two different FFmpeg commands and I have it in two commands just because I do want a separate audio file for backup purposes essentially, just in case I ever did need an exclusive audio file. Um, so my screen recording command is what I pretty much just explained with the only additions of I'm setting the frame rate to be 30 frames per second and I'm setting the codec to be H.264, so CV is just for video codec, um, and dash QP0 is for lossless quality. Um, the codec is actually going to, it's going to be in this MPV, uh, MPV, MKV container format here. Um, MKV and MP4 and a couple other formats are all container formats, so if you set the codec, they all support different codecs, so if you want to actually set the codec, you can do that. It's not like the codec is going to be determined by the file extension. So anyways, I'm setting the codec and then I just have the file that it's going to get written to here. Um, and the date command is just ensuring that every file name is going to be unique, so I'm not, you know, overwriting old recordings or anything. Um, and then with the audio recording part, it's just getting written to a WAV file, but the only thing of interest here is the uh, audio filter, which is, this is what the noise filtering um, as I'm recording is. So it's just using FFmpeg's audio filter of AFFTDN, which I have no idea what that stands for, but it allows for a bunch of different noise filtering options. And I'm using noise floor of negative 75, but obviously that's the kind of thing where you would want to adjust it to your particular microphone. Um, mine has like kind of a lot of white noise in it. so this just gets rid of that and it's a lot clearer with that. So um, anyways, that gets written to a WAV file. And what I'm doing with both of these recordings is it's actually getting uh, the PIDs sent to temporary files. So that way I actually can check whether I am recording or not at the end here um, by seeing if the file exists. So if that recording file exists, then when the script is called, it's going to end the recording and exit the script. Or if that file doesn't exist, it's going to start recording, which allows me to have just one hotkey and always toggle on and off the recording state with that hotkey. And obviously every time it records, it's just going to start, you know, a new file uh, for that particular recording. And the last thing happening in this script is just the DWM blocks icon up here. And um, credit to Luke Smith, as usual, for the idea of the kill signals with DWM blocks. I don't know if it was his idea in the first place or if he got it from somebody else, but that is where I got the idea from. So credit where it's due. Um, anyways, I'm using just custom kill signals to kill the recording icon block up here um, and replace it as needed. And I've gone over that a million times. So I'll just link to another video in the description where I go over the DWM block stuff. But um, um, I don't know. The last thing I'm doing is just sending notifications um, when I start or end recording, and this is my recording script. So it leaves me with a .wav file and a .mkv file, and from there what I have to do is take this phone video, pull it off of the phone, and then combine everything together. So I have a script to do that. Um, and essentially, I just go to the directory that has my video files in it. I, I make a new directory for the singular video that I'm working on, slap everything in the directory, and then just run this script. And um, actually, before I go over the script, I wanted to mention this page here. Uh, FF Improviser, I guess would be how you would say it. Um, and this is a really, really good resource. I will put it in the description. Um, it's got a bunch of just like cheat sheet stuff for how to do stuff with FFmpeg. I've relied on this site a ton for figuring out how to do stuff because if you don't want to read through the super thick FFmpeg man page, um, this is way easier. You can just skip to what you need and it explains commands. Um, really, really helpful site. So I will put this in the description. But anyways, on to my script here, and this is where I'm going to start talking about filters in FFmpeg a little bit, since um, that is what I'm doing. The entire process is just applying different filters so that it can then, you know, take this uh, screen recording, uh, crop it, uh, flip it out, remove audio, apply it onto the screencast. So anyways, the first thing I'm doing is taking this screen recording, this, uh, sorry, not screen recording, this phone recording as an input file, um, and applying a video filter. I'm applying first a crop and then a horizontal flip, and you can apply multiple videos, uh, video filters at once with FFmpeg. So crop, comma, horizontal flip, the crop dimensions are just crop dimensions. Um, and the last thing I'm doing is just removing audio since I don't need audio from the phone video. And that outputs to this cam.mov. The next thing I need to do is map my audio from my WAV file onto my screen recording, my MKV. So I'm just taking those both as input files. I'm mapping them together. And oh, this is this is pretty important. This codec here is just set to copy. Uh, so that way I don't re-encode the video because it is best to avoid re-encoding a video if you don't have to. Um, a, to save time and B, the more you re-encode, the more chance for errors, etc. you're getting. So um, avoid re-encoding when possible. Um, and then I just end up with this applied.mkv. 
I'm then gonna draw the gray box in the corner and that's just a video filter for draw box. Um, I'm just giving it coordinates and a color and it's gonna fill up the box and then I get this box.mkv. Um, then I'm gonna overlay this uh, cam.mov that got you know cropped and flipped etc. Um, that's gonna get overlaid onto the screen video and I'm using complex filtering here so that first of all I need to actually make sure they are in the same color space um, which is pretty important because by default my phone video here is in a different color space than my screen recording so I need to make sure they're actually converted to the same color space um, so I'm doing that here and then after that I overlay the uh, phone recording on onto the screen recording and then that just gets exported to this final.mkv which is what gets uploaded to YouTube and then I just remove the extra stuff um, from the process and I send myself a notification and this is how I edit my videos with FFmpeg. Um, it's a lot easier to be able to just go into a directory and run a script as opposed to having to you know open up a program like Kden Live and then import all the files and you know rearrange everything and then render it out it's a lot easier just to run a script. So this is where FFmpeg really shines. If you have any sort of repetitive accent actions that you're doing over and over in editing, you may well be able to just replace it with FFmpeg scripts. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time. Peace.